G'day everyone, today we're going to cover the Division Designer and everything you need to know about it. I'm talking how to change your templates, why you should have different divisions, what makes a good design, and some basic steps to get you started. As always, if these guides help you out, you can help me out by liking this video, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. I scratch your back, you scratch mine, you know what I'm saying? Also, I'll have timestamps down below for all the important stuff, and if you have any videos you want to see me make, please let me know down below. I'll also have a bonus tip at the end, so stick around for that. In Hearts of Iron 4, your divisions and their composition is one of the biggest make or breaks for any playthrough, so it's really important you understand how to make them as effective as possible. The beauty of this game is you pretty much have free reign over how you design your divisions, including the equipment they use, how many men are in that division, and other supporting factors to influence their stats, all of which will affect their strengths and weaknesses. Why is this important? Well, since the No Step Back update, there's no longer a one-size-fits-all option for your division design. The main reason for this is the change in combat width. Each type of terrain has a fixed stat called combat width, which limits how many divisions can enter combat in a particular province. You can see this by clicking on a province and then hovering over the terrain type in the bottom left. I'll also include a list of the combat widths per terrain on screen for you now to screenshot. Each division also has a combat width stat, but it's variable depending on the size and composition of what that division is. This is important as if you attack into a province with a combat width of 75 and you've got three divisions of 25 width each, you'll fit those three divisions into that combat perfectly with no penalties. However, if you have three divisions that are 30 width, only two divisions will join the combat without penalty and the third will be going over the maximum combat width. And while it still might join the battle, it won't be as effective. This is why it's important to anticipate the areas you'll be fighting in and try to have divisions built to match that terrain. Another thing to consider is what your divisions are going to be used for. If you have an infantry template that's designed for defense, they're likely not going to be super effective at attacking, or at least not as effective as a template designed for that role. We'll get into this a bit more later, but first let's look at the division designer. In the recruit menu, you can see that we have every kind of division available here. To edit one, you just click on the edit button. I know, rocket science, right? Now, there's a bit to look at here, so let's run through it. At the top, you've got the division icon, which shows up on the map and it will help you tell your divisions apart. You can also change this to whatever you want. Next to that, you also have your division name and naming scheme. So changing these can be fun for roleplay or whatever and to help you tell your units apart, but those three things don't really have any bearing on combat. Next is your, priorit your prioritization options. The red arrow shows that this division template will be issued the oldest and crappiest equipment first. This is great for your reserve divisions or garrisons. The orange up arrows will basically make them elite divisions and that will give them the best of the best. So I'll pretty much only use this for my special forces and any attacking divisions. The standard option will just give you an average balanced quality of equipment. Now all of these helmet icons down here show you what battalions make up your divisions. You can edit this using army XP by either swapping out one of the existing battalions by clicking on it and then choosing a different option of whatever kind of uh, battalion you want to replace that with. Or you can click on the plus arrow, which will add a new kind of battalion, therefore increasing the combat width as well. You can also add different support companies on the left hand column here. One thing to note is that all the battalion types in a column need to be of the same in terms of if they're motorized or not. For example, if we wanted to add some tanks to this division, we can't add it to this column already having standard infantry in it. We would need to create a new armored column here, and then we can add our tanks or whatever this way. You might notice as well that with every kind of tank or battalion that we add into this template, the stats on the right hand side change. So again, there's a lot to go through, but we'll touch on the main stats that you really need to keep an eye on here. Your division HP is how much damage your divisions can take before they're destroyed. Bigger divisions can take more damage in combat before they're destroyed, and that's why you would make one division that's 20 width over making 10 divisions that are two width. Organization is how long your division can remain in battle before they have to withdraw. That's one of the most important stats to keep an eye on when making a division and also while conducting combat. Generally, an org stat should be at least 30 for it to be somewhat effective, and this stat can be increased when you upgrade your doctrines but generally around 40 to 50 org for a division would be a good point to aim for. 
infantry and motorized infantry or cavalry are pretty much the only battalions that would actually increase your org stat. So anything else like artillery, tanks, or whatever else will generally not increase it or they'll even reduce it. So that's why your templates should have a mix of infantry with other battalions, not like this one, which is just pure artillery with zero org. Supply use is another one to keep an eye on. Armored and motorized units will use more supply and fuel than an infantry unit would. So your divisions with a high supply use can really benefit from the logistics company to reduce this. For example, our infantry only use 0.72 supply, whereas this template full of tanks and motorized use 3.07. In the combat stats, the most important thing to understand is soft attack versus hard attack and how they relate to each other. So each division has a hardness stat, which you can see by this bar here. This division has 0% hardness in it as there are no armored units. But if we add some, for example, a few of these, you can see that the hardness stat has now gone up and the tooltip shows us what percentage of hard versus soft attack this division template will take. Hard attack only damages units with hardness. If you have a division with 500 hard attack and 10 soft attack against an infantry only division, it's not gonna do any damage to that division. Whereas if you had 500 soft attack, you'd most likely cut through them pretty easily. So soft attack is good for soft divisions, but hard attack is good against high hardness divisions. So that's your tanks and armor divisions. Let me know if that doesn't make sense in the comments. You also have other stats like defense, breakthrough, piercing and armor, which are important to know, but are pretty easy to understand. Defense and breakthrough are opposed to each other, as well as piercing and armor. So if you have a high piercing division going up against a, a enemy division that has a low armor stat, you're going to inflict a lot of casualties on their armored units. You also have the entrenchment stat. The higher this is, the more your divisions can dig in and get combat bonuses on defense. So this can be a good thing to increase for your defending divisions. You can also see this division's combat width, which you look at uh, by hovering over here. Uh, keep an eye on this as you design your template to make sure it's going to be most effective for the type of terrain that you're going to be fighting in. Finally, on the right hand side, you can see your equipment requirements. This is most useful for when you're designing armored divisions and you can see how many you're going to need to create a division template to make sure you've got enough factories on that kind of equipment. On the bottom here, you can see the different terrain adjusters, which show any penalties or buffs to fighting in different types of terrain, uh, like for example, across rivers or amphibious landings. These are great to look at, especially when you're specializing units, like your special forces. For example, your engineers actually add a huge bonus to amphibious landings and river crossings. So make sure you put them in your marine divisions. I hope this makes sense and helps you see why it's a good idea to have different divisions for different roles. As a baseline, you'll generally need a standard infantry division to hold your front lines, maybe attack a little, but not really what you're going to be relying on. You'll need a garrison division, uh, usually cavalry with military police support company to suppress your occupied territories. Uh, for your information as well to change that, you click into your flag, occupied territories, and then you can change your template by clicking on this icon here. Then you'll also need a garrison template to defend your ports and your low risk fronts, such as down here with Spain when you're playing as France. Uh, I don't really expect them to attack me. I know that my main enemies are going to be Germany and Italy. So that's where I'm going to put my strongest divisions and then my, you know, my reserves over here. Uh, and then finally, you'll generally need an attacking division with good stats and breakthrough, which you can use to push through the enemy lines. Given that you need army XP to change your templates, which can be hard to come by early game, start with these few and then go from there. You can specialize for other roles beyond these few as well once you start gaining more XP. For example, having Mountaineers built to be 25 combat width or some beefy tank divisions you can use for your attacks or stronger reserves to defend your important ports from naval invasions. Feel free to play around and see what works for you. As a place to get started though, I'll show you some of the division templates that I like to use and I'll talk you through why. I'll leave the template on the screen while I talk through it so you can screenshot them and copy the designs for yourself if you want. First is my standard infantry template. These are what I use for holding my main lines and attacking when I've got a numerical advantage. It's just a simple 22 width which fits well into forest, hills and plains with minimal penalties. 
Uh, these also are the most common terrain that you'll generally fight in, especially in Europe. Uh, and then the support AA has enough air attack to reduce the enemy Kaz bonus they get, as well as enough piercing to penetrate the early level tanks in the game. Next, for an attacking division, I generally use something like this. Uh, a lot of artillery to boost the soft attack, and then engineers to help me attack across a variety of terrains, but they're optional. The main one here is the logistics to reduce the supply usage that you sort of need when you have a larger division. I use two variations for my reserves and port defense divisions. The first one is just a 20 width infantry with no support. Sometimes if I'm low on manpower or guns, this will be 10 width, um, but basically they're cheap with enough defense to hold off a lot of naval invasions on their own, as well as just holding those low risk fronts in case someone declares war on me when I'm not expecting it. If I've got ports that I really don't want to lose and I've got the equipment spare, then I'll basically just chuck on engineers for the entrenchment, as well as support AA and artillery just to beef up their stats a little bit. For a garrison division, I'll always use cavalry with military police as soon as I can get it. There's a bit of a weird mechanic that I won't go super in depth with, but the wider your cavalry divisions are, then the less support equipment will be needed for the same level of suppression. So basically, if you've got a 50 width cavalry division with military police, it's going to give you the same suppression as a two width cavalry division with military police but it's going to use way less equipment so uh yeah i basically start off at 20 and then i'll increase that up as high as i can later if i've got the spare xp laying around for my tanks i would usually do something around this around 42 width either with mediums or heavies depending on what i research uh, and then i'll give them supply maintenance engineer and aa country uh, aa companies as well um, I'll usually start out with them on motorized infantry because that's what you have early on. And then when I can research and produce mechanized units, I'll swap out this for the mechanized as I've got the uh, equipment to change it over. Uh, also adding a couple of motorized AA battalions help reduce the damage from enemy casts. My mountaineers are pretty much always this template. Uh, generally, it's going to help you like dig in and hold the mountains as well as like the logistics helping reduce the supply consumption, um, but they've got enough attack and they fit perfectly into the combat width to help you push through that type of terrain. Uh, and then for my marines, generally a 30 width works really well. A lot of the coastal tiles that you'll be naval invading or that I find that I naval invade, they'll predominantly be planes. So that's a 90 width. They fit perfectly into that. Please always add engineers to your marine divisions they give such a good boost like they, your marines actually get a bonus when naval invading and attacking across rivers with them so don't ever forget that finally for paratroopers i'll either go down the spam paratrooper method which is just cheap even smaller than this you can even do two width if you want to but basically a lot of cheap, low width divisions that I can para drop all over enemy territory just to disrupt them uh, and confuse the AI, but with the ultimate intention that they'll all just get unalived pretty quickly. If I want to have paratroopers that don't die straight away, then I'll generally do something like this. Like support companies are optional, but 20 width, they've got enough HP and sort of enough attack that if you drop them around a port and encircle it, then with all of them attacking at once, you can generally, uh, with the encirclement bonus, take that port and then be able to bring the rest of your, your army through. And then that's pretty much all you need to know about the division designer in Hearts of Iron 4 and a few sort of basic designs which should get you started, but feel free to play around and try different things from there and let me know how you go. Uh, also, you've made it through to the end of the video, now it's time for the bonus tip. So early on in the game, especially as a democratic country, it can be really hard to get army XP. Uh, I have a lot of it right now because I use console commands to give it to myself for the purpose of the video, but in Iron Man, it's going to be pretty tricky to find. So in your military high command, you can click on one of these uh, commanders here and assign yourself when you've got the command power and political power, just one of the low level generals. They're going to give you a daily trickle of army XP, which is gradually over time going to give you a small amount of XP where you can start changing your division templates from there. 
The other thing you can do as well, if you've got a few divisions sitting around, you can actually get them to exercise. Uh, don't shift click on this, just click the normal exercise thing. So even once they're level three, they'll continue training. This is gradually over time also gonna give you a slow trickle in of army XP, uh, even once they're at level three. So that can also be an easy way for democratic countries to get some, uh, get some ability to modify the divisions early on. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and entertaining. And if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see when I post new videos. I also stream on Twitch. My link's in the description. So please stop by and say g'day and I'll see you in the next one. You also have the entrenchment stat. And the higher this is, the more your division can dig in and get combat bonuses on defense. So this can be a good thing to increase for your, your defending div divisions. Wow, can I even speak?